AMD just released their AMD Radeon Pro Duo video card, which is a dual GPU. It's got two Fiji GPUs in it, so that'd be the same as was used in the Fury X. It has two of those. It's still liquid-cooled, and it's $1,500. So that just came out. We're not going to get one to review, but we can certainly do a quick recap of the specs. So this is something that's targeted at VR. $1,500 units. It's a single card solution with two GPUs, and it is about 350 watt TDP between the two of them. The memory setup is two banks of four gigabytes of HBM, so each GPU has direct access to four gigabytes of HBM, and they will list that as eight gigabytes in their specifications, which is not technically incorrect, but uh, using the older APIs, you're only going to be accessing four gigabytes of that at any one time. With the new APIs, though, things change a bit because DirectX 12 and Vulkan can talk to the full pool of SLI or Crossfire memory with their explicit multi-GPU support embedded in the API directly. So that's the basics. The memory bandwidth, all this stuff, is the same as you're used to with HBM from previously, but just to recap, it's got one terabyte per second of total potential throughput on the memory alone that's using the high bandwidth memory that is stackable on the substrate uh, on top of an interposer for the GPU. And that was introduced with the Fury X. So that's HBM version 1. It's using the Fiji GPU, and it's got a 4096 bit memory interface. There's two of those, one for each card. So that's all the same. It's just two of them now. Uh, the card itself is pushing the sort of liquid VR solution that AMD has been big on since. I believe GDC maybe a year or two ago now. And Liquid VR is basically a means to reduce time warp, which is the effect in virtual reality where if there's a slight frame drop or poor low frame time performance, 1% lows, 0.1% lows we call them, then Liquid VR will smooth that out and help reduce the chance of becoming sick or nauseated as a result of the change in frame times and frame delivery. So that's what Liquid VR does. The card has 16 teraflops of compute, which is totally useless for us as gamers. For the most part, it's, it's just a lot of power for $1,500. But that's because it's being targeted most heavily at developers and people working with VR or high-end 3D modeling, animation, those types of solutions, specifically looking at VR. And that's why we're not going to be reviewing it, because it's just out of scope for the website. But it's interesting to talk about. So a uh, dual GPU solution at 1000 megahertz base clock. So that's the core clock for each of the GPUs. And you can overclock that slightly, though. We've generally seen about a 50 megahertz overclock for these AMD GPUs. So not too impressive, maybe 5% gain best for FPS and games. And uh, that pretty much covers what we've got for news right now, other than I, I guess I can talk about the cooling for a second. It's got FEP tubing. So this is using the same sort of uh, modified liquid cooling solution as was in the Fury X. And that means that there's a cold plate on the card for each of the GPUs. And unlike the hybrid solution cooling, which uses a VRM blower fan for the VRM, the cooling solution for the Fury X and the Fiji cards, this one in particular, the Radeon Pro Duo, is using a, an FEP tube. So that's a more plastic rigid tube. And that has an insulating layer inside of it that's, uh, that pre prevents permeation of liquid into the tubes and loss of liquid over time. They also have sort of an extra tank of liquid on the 120 millimeter radiator. So if you look at the radiator, it's pretty thick, but it has like an extruded portion below the fan. And that is used to store extra liquid. And so that extra liquid is supposed to help uh, lengthen the lifetime of the GPU of the liquid cooling solution, which generally they last about five years, but should be a bit longer on the Pro Duo and the Fury X because they have that extra chamber. So that's the setup there. The liquid cooling, the liquid itself, temperature will run a bit higher than you're used to with hybrid solution VR cooler or VRM coolers because the uh, liquid for the AMD cards is cooling the capacitors, the VRM, and everything else. And that means overall that the capacitor leakage should be lower, which helps improve the TDP of the device overall, hence the lower TDP than usual for AMD. So that is the new video card. Links in the description below for more information on all the other news that's come out in the last week or so. Patreon link the post for the video if you like this content. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.